met with Drew and he said, it's really different from everything you've done before. Read the script, take a look, let me know. And I remember sitting down to read the script for the first time and not being able to put it down because it was just so different from anything else I'd ever been involved with and so different from what I was expecting from Drew. And there was something so beautiful and haunting about it. And I was like, oh my God, this is, uh, this is really, really, really exciting. And I called Drew a couple hours after he sent me the script and I said, all right, we should, we should probably start. I think Drew's done such a great job of crafting something that doesn't really feel like other movies. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that's what makes it really fun. You know, I think we're living in an era where movies are starting to feel more and more similar to each other. And we just kind of having a lot of movies that are similar coming out one after the other. And to have something that's really, really unique and really different, I think is going to be a really nice thing to have in the theater. I think the thing that Drew, is, that Drew does really well is he infuses this real life to these characters and gives them a real sense of heart. And I think that makes it really, really exciting. I think that's kind of my favorite part about working with Drew is the, is the heart that kind of comes with it. Martin uh, was someone that, uh, that I'd never met before, but his, his ability to understand what Drew was after was really profound. And as we started designing the hotel, that process from the carpet which was all custom-made carpet to kind of capture these period patterns that existed, but in colors and shades and tones that they had not actually been made in. And the wallpapers were all custom to the, to the movie. And, I mean, even the bedspreads, every detail of that hotel was custom, was custom designed, but everything felt so lived in and so real. And I think when people watch the film and they see that hotel for the first time, I think it really takes them somewhere cool. And you really feel like you're in a, in a place you've never been before. I love when a director comes in with a document just laying out how color is going to work in the film. Because so much of the palette of a movie can tell you things about character, about the emotions that you're supposed to feel in the film, about the way the movie's going to unfold. And I think the way Drew approached color was so robust and so specific that it made it really made the movie come to life right away for everybody. John Hamm was a really exciting choice as an actor for the film. Um, He joined the process really late, and he brought so much energy and so much life and so much excitement and enthusiasm to the role. And I really cannot imagine anyone else in the part because he's got the look of the FBI guy. He feels like the FBI guy, but he plays that Southern schmucky vacuum cleaner salesman so well with such great great enthusiasm for his accoutrement that you just can't help but love him darlene is the character who is moral throughout she doesn't compromise she doesn't bend she doesn't do the wrong thing on occasion and as you watch the rest of the movie everyone kind of makes compromise everyone else kind of makes compromises everyone kind of makes gray decisions everyone kind of makes morally challenging decisions and Darlene just stays on the straight and narrow the whole time he's trying to change he's a man who's done poor who's done bad who's done ill but who always wanted to do the right thing and he's trying to find out how to do that Dakota's character Emily is a tough is a tough person and she is doing what's right for her sister she's not necessarily going about it the right way and you kind of see what happens as a result to her um, because she's making compromised decisions, but the things she's doing are brave, and she's trying to protect her sister, and she's trying to remove her sister from a bad situation, and you realize she's been protecting Rose since they were children, you know, and she's not going to let anything come between her and her sister. If you look at her singing in The Big Wonder when Laramie's going through the hallway, I think we did that 27 times, and she performed that whole thing 27 times, all the way through without even flinching. And it was unbelievable to watch. And her voice lasted the whole time. And she she has such a control over her voice, over the instrument that is her voice. And she just really killed it. To have such a big musical component in the film was something I was super psyched about. Because it's just something great about that vibe. There's something about that guy 
that shows up early, that stays late, that really cares, that works harder, that's on the set watching the other performers and that just wants to be there. And you understand that that's why he's endured as a, as a performer and that's why he has such a legendary status is because he loves it. And it becomes so apparent when you watch him interact with the set. You know, there's something about like the elder statesman role that he's taken on in cinema as just this guy who's like, I'm there and I love the work and I love the craft. And you feel it in his performance. You feel it in the way he interacts with the crew. Chef knows the name of everybody on the set, of everybody in the camera department, of everybody in the sound department, of everybody in the PAs and the prop department. Jeff, like everyone he interacts with, he knows their name. He cares. He takes an interest. And there's something about it that's so warm and relaxing and comforting to have that coming from your star that just sets the tone. There's something about his portrayal of Miles that is just like awesome. And I think he's a really, really great young performer. And I feel like we're really lucky to have him so early in his career in our film because I think he's going to be a performer that we're all going to be watching for a long time because there's just something about him that's just really full of emotion and heartbreak and humor and warmth and all these different qualities that make for an actor that can really be enduring. And I think Lewis has all those things inherent in him. And it's, it's really cool. Dakota came in and was so formidable in how she handled the role that she was just able to just own the scenes that she's in. And it's all through very little dialogue and a ton of nuanced performance. And it's really cool to watch because she doesn't have much to say, but she just draws people out. And it really makes for a compelling character. And I think it's like, it's really going to make people see Dakota as a performer in a totally different way. When Drew and I first started talking about the film, Drew was like, as you read it, think about Chris for this Billy Lee part that kind of comes in. I think it'd be incredible. I think it'd be such a coup to get Chris for this. And, and I read it, and it was so unlike anything I've ever seen Chris do, and unlike any part Chris has ever really played before, but it also felt like everything that Chris should be doing. Because here's this guy who's so alluring and so seductive and so like able just to like bring you into his realm and kind of pull you into his into his orbit and this crazy world that he lives in. But he's also like just charism charisma, charisma, charisma. And it's all the things Chris is great at, but like using them all for like completely different roles and a completely different vibe. And there's something about it that's so awesome watching Chris perform this part all these things are happening that feel that feel bigger than they are and as a result the movie that should just be a little character piece about people in the rain at a hotel one night is like what did I just experience it was big it was bold it was like for theaters it was something about it that was like so alluring and crazy and unexpected and a journey and a ride and all these things and then it hits you that it's all about heart and redemption and you don't expect these like themes to come in. And at the end of the day, the, the end result of watching it is like, I felt so many different things that I wasn't expecting to feel all at once, all rolled on top of each other. That's pretty cool. We both have like a shorthand with Michael that makes it really fun to kind of dive into something like this together. And he just really brings a lot to it. You know, we've had to work very quickly with him because we've had a very short post, but his ability to craft a scene and to bob and weave and to, to find the emotion and to find the heart and to find the character is really unprecedented. He's really, he's really special. When you have a script that's as well-written as, as Bad Times the El Royale, and you have a director that cares as much about cast and it cares as much about character as Drew does, you end up with something that's unexpected and that's special and that's new and that's interesting and that's fun because it's like, here's these great characters, here's this great writing, here's these great actors, let's just see what happens. And that makes it really fun.